Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I know I said I was done with KDN Live. I'm going to be doing the final video in the KDN Live mini series. But my goodness, everybody just wanted to see more. So we're going to do more. And as it turns out, KDN Live recently put out a new version, a recent version, that has some interesting new things. So let's take the opportunity and catch up on what we missed and what's new, and let's do it now. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in for this video. If this is your first time, thank you so much. I do a lot of work here to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I just covered a little mini series on Kaden Live. It's a fantastic open source video and, and graphical and so much tool <laughs> that we've been going through and there's there's so much more to do uh, there was a lot of feedback from those that there was m more you wanted to see so we took a break last week we did inkscape go check that out it's a very interesting vector video but we're going to continue on by your request to do some other things in kden live which do offer some really interesting value to your creative process so Wanted to kick things off a little bit here with um, some features that I became aware of and kind of catch us up and then I'll go into some of the newer stuff with this new version. And by the way, the one I'm running on right now is 20.12.1, just for reference. All right. So first thing I wanted to mention here is there actually is a timeline feature built into KDN Live called subtitling. And this is really cool in that you could apply titles right on top of your video without having to create individual titles. It's a tool designed specifically to achieve subtitles. And to take a through how that works under project, there's a subtitle area, just add subtitle. That will actually tack on uh, another track right in the timeline here. I think you can see it just above the camera feed here. And you have the option now to work within there. It'll, it will inject one slide to start based on wherever your, your scrubber is. So just be aware of that. But I can take this first item and we can just start plugging in text. Okay, and that, you can see it on the bottom of my playback there, starts to show a subtitle. Now the way you do just kind of step it forward, it doesn't seem to have an auto rolling mechanism. So what you would do then is when you're ready to continue on, you just use the kind of, I'll call it the wizard approach here, but you just tack on with the plus button, a brand new subtitle and continue on. So all things considered, it's actually a really slick idea because it saves you a lot of headache from trying to create individual titles, put the uh, text align where you want it, size it appropriately, and do all that. This makes it very streamlined and actually really innovative uh, for you to achieve subtitling on your own if that's something you want to explore. So uh, a worth, very worthwhile function. Again, it makes its own layer right in the timeline, so it's very easy to, uh, to work with alongside your other video things. Subtitling. All right. A new effect that I became aware of in this video um, that I'll just bring out because it's next on the list is something called pillar echo all right and this is really cool because if you've happened to have shot video in portrait on your cell phone or something that has the the vertical recording that's really impossible to fix uh coming after the fact but you may have noticed a popular effect these days where there's kind of the side by side blurred bars um so to simulate that they created this effect built-in called Pillar Echo. And what that looks like is this, where you get the kind of the two bars on either side to compensate for the space you're not using and thereby fill up a landscape view. So that is now built-in, baked into the program. It's called Pillar Echo and it's really awesome. Try it out. All right. Some other things that are really awesome. Let's get through these as well. <laughs> Uh, I became aware of something called online resources. All right. And what this does for you is it gives you access to either uh, royalty free or 
video footage that is outside the statute of limitations, meaning that it is not restricted by copyright. So you have these options to search right from within KDN Live. You don't have to leave the tool. What I'm doing here is under Project Online Resources, and I'm going to flip just, for example, into archive.org, uh, which you can go to the site, by the way, and just download video that way as well. Or you can search within here, which is what I did. I'm just going to search for fire. And that returns results of all kinds matching that tag. So I was able to pick from the these results and download something. And I will caution you that I tried two different things. There was an MOV format of the same finding. The, that didn't work. The MP4 version did work. I don't think that's necessarily a kid in live thing because it's very format friendly. I just think that not everything free out there is necessarily 100% stable. <laughs> so just be aware of that. This is free. This is These are contributions gathered up in this case by archive.org, which is kind of a massive archive project uh, to capture things that are just um, for public consumption. So try it out and use it for what it is. Um, I happened to find a clip from some firemen who were doing an exercise. Um, so it, just to give you an example of what's out there, that, that could serve a purpose in a lot of ways if you're trying to have an effect or build a video around some real life thing or if you want to redub audio or if you wanted something like a newscast going on in the background that could be an interesting idea it's just it's freebie stock stuff that you can use uh which you don't have to create yourself so that can save a lot of time all right so again that was under project and online resources pretty cool and and as you download things it actually takes away the legwork of having to import all that it does it all for you which is beautiful in that i downloaded what i wanted and it dropped it right into my project bin so that was really neat all right. Another thing I wanted to mention uh, under project here is this thing called the counter, which again is another time saving mechanism where you can actually generate a time, a counter, a countdown. Uh, you may have seen that in other videos, and that may be a type of thing you're looking to use in your videos, whether you want to do a timed thing and show that the timer is running. Um, that option is here. There's actually a lot of different things. You can count up to something. You could do a count in as an introduction to your video because um, I've seen that done uh, very stylistically and that's really neat. You don't have to keep the background, by the way. Uh, that is, is something that is up to you to customize. But um, yeah, you can set the duration of it so that it works appropriately with what you've got. And um, it is somewhat basic in that I don't really have loads of control over the positioning of things are within it, but it's just cool that you could generate this. And really after the fact, you could size it with the transform after that. So that's not such a big deal, but it is a really cool thing that you could generate um, timer. <laughs> so to do that, it will force you to create a file. I'll just walk through that here so you can see. That drops into my project folder here. And now we should have that. I think it's giving me trouble because of the uh, audio. There we go. Let me just bring that around so we can see it. There we go. We can see that doing its magic. All right. Now, I discovered something else here, which was just by accident, really, because it's not in a place you'd normally look, and it's called Clip Jobs. And one of the things that's really interesting here, if I right click on one of my project bin things here, are something called something called the stabilize. And this will actually help you to take out some of the, the bumpiness post shot, uh, which is a really interesting thing to have. And I think this is designed more of like shooting in a car and there's like a rhythmic or, or inadvertent uh, shakiness going on because the car is in motion and driving over things that are not perfectly smooth. But just the test it out i took some really purposefully awful video just shaking around see what it could do and it is very interesting to see what happened there i'll play that back for you so i have my original you can kind of see the gap here the line is a little bit off oh well took a guess as i was rotoscoping it out uh stabilize is on the left original is on the right and you can kind of see the differences that are going on here. There is a little bit of blur compensation, a little bit of zoom to, to get rid of the shakiness. So that's kind of why it looks to an extreme. And again, I was really pushing the limits here where I was just purposefully 
trying to trying to break this thing to see how far I could go. And there are a lot of tweaking and options and things of how you can do this. And I'll show those to you. So if I right click, right click on this and go to stabilize, you have a lot of adjustment values here to work from and create this, this stabilized file. All right, and I'll confess, I don't know what they all do perfectly just yet. So I'd suggest try them out, tweak, make small adjustments and understand that as you apply it, what it's going to do is create this stabilized project folder and drop them in air as something I believe called an MLT, yes. So it's gonna generate that for you. You actually have to take that though when you're done and drag that into the timeline, okay? It doesn't do that for you, especially if you're working with a clip that's already in the timeline, it, which is good, right? It doesn't destroy your work. Uh, but know that you have to take that step. If there was audio in the original clip, it will preserve an audio track but I wouldn't count so much on that being great after it's been stabilized. Use the original audio uh, for that. So that is how the stabilization works. And I think it's really innovative and definitely worth trying out if you're in that situation of there's a little bit of a bump to it. You might be able to correct it with that tool, stabilize. All right, and the last thing I wanted to mention uh, is something called proxy clips, which can save you loads of time if you're working in high quality video. What it will do is take a clip and it will create a, a scaled, a, a compressed version of it, a scaled compressed version of it so that you can work with it in KDN Live. And then when you're ready to export, it will actually maintain the, the markers and things and edits you've done, but it will actually use the full quality file. So if you intend to use these long edits, these long cuts, where you need to cut it up six ways from Sunday and do all this work, rather than put that intensive load on your computer or run the risk that you may destabilize the tool, because uh, it does happen, believe it or not, where you're just using that much data to edit all at once, you could use proxy clips to help, com to help combat that. And to enable it, first what you have to do is go under settings, and configure KDEN Live. And then there's this proxy clip section where you just have to put a check in the box and click apply and okay. Now I noted that it did not actually activate after I did that until I closed and reopened the software. So just know that that seems to be a caveat of turning it on, but once you do that, you're good to go. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna take one of my clips over here. We'll just use this one and I now have this option proxy clip, which I can put a checkbox to. That you can see it is working on it. It is actually creating that compressed scaled version of it in a cached repository. We'll talk more about that in a second. And it will create this P on it to tell me that that is a proxy clip. It is a scaled clip of that. So now as I go to use that, get rid of the other one here. You really don't notice much of a difference as I'm doing it here, it does a really good job transcoding it. But the point of it is that I can work on this lesser version and lessen the load on my PC, on my computer. And then when I'm done, still export with full quality because it references the original video for my edits. So it's an awesome, powerful feature uh, that can be really uh, time saving because it's, it could potentially slow you down at some point, but it can also help you achieve greater uh, amounts of work with high quality video without running the risk of, of crashing. So definitely worth checking out proxy clips. Okay, so when you want to manage all this proxy information, it may become necessary to clean it up once in a while because as you could guess, that may accrue with time. So what you would actually do is there's this button right here. It's kind of a circle with a play button in the middle that you click down and go to manage cached data. And within here, you can either go to all projects or the current project that you're working on. And that shows you what you have and you can actually clean up uh, the facets of that, this in this case, proxy clips, just to flush that out um, if it's getting to be too much. <laughs> so that is where you maintain and clean that up. So that is really the show. That is really the whole thing. And that is most of what I could see of what we missed, what, what you have been asking for, and also some new things that were included in this latest release. I know there were a whole lot of bug fixes too. There was also something else 
uh, for doing edge banding where you could uh, do some stylistic bordering, which is cool. Uh, check that out if you like to, but I decided not to show that because there were just so many other things to get to. So check out the release notes and check out the tool if you haven't before because it's just so much value in this free open source tool. I really appreciate you spending your time with me and sticking with me this far. Once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome things we're going to do here. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful to you in your journey of creative exploration. And consider leaving a comment, asking a question, and not just for me, but for the whole community, because it's great to see people helping each other and learning from each other's experience and growing together. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.